Today, the Labour MP for Newark was found guilty of making a false election return. She automatically loses her seat, forcing a by-election, and has been sentenced to 100 hours community service after being condemned for dishonesty by the judge. Fiona Jones's agent, Des Witcher, was also convicted on the same charge. Fiona Jones has said she will appeal. From Newark, this report now from Michael Crick, who gave evidence to the Neil Committee on the very issue of election expenses. On arriving at 9.30, Fiona Jones seemed confident the jury would deliver the right verdict. Three hours later, her political career, in the judge's words, was in shreds. Obviously, I'm extremely disappointed and indeed very surprised about um, the result that you've all heard today. After consulting my legal team, I've made the decision to launch an immediate appeal. And because of that, it would be inappropriate to say any more at this time. Thank do you, you. Do you think that what you did is any different from other candidates? Well, I'm sorry, I've decided I won't say any more at this time. Thank you very much. Mrs Jones' formal sentence was a mere 100 hours community service, but her real punishment, immediate disqualification from being an MP, while her agent was fined £750. My conscience is absolutely clear, and I'm sure there are hundreds of people in Newark who will support me in my, the fight to clear my name. But Labour's regional organiser wouldn't discuss the wider issues. Are Labour candidates and that campaign's going to be much more careful in future about what they spend? I couldn't comment at the moment. Do you expect to uh, win the by-election? No comment. Thank you. So, it was left to an official of the Newark party to defend their now former What's MP. Your verdict? I was gutted by the result, by the verdict. After the judge's summing up, I felt there was no possibility of a guilty verdict. Fiona has worked so hard and Des Witcher has worked so hard. I, I find it difficult to conceive how a guilty verdict was arrived at. One might say that this was a case that was simply waiting to happen. From conversations with candidates and agents over the years, it's become clear that all three main parties have taken more and more risks with the expenses law. Indeed, many of those involved acknowledge privately that they've been doing wrong. One could say that there's been a climate of regular recklessness, or at worst, institutionalised dishonesty. There are scores, if not hundreds, of candidates and agents who could have been prosecuted. Mrs Jones was simply the first to get caught. Fiona Jones was one of the unexpected Labour victors of 1997. Astonished to hear on election night she was going to overturn a 7,000 Tory oh, majority. <laughs> I think I'd better go in and look at the voters for that's good. <laughs> but well before those votes had been counted, her Lib Dem and Tory opponents suspected Labour had spent a lot more than the official legal spending limit for Newark, which was just under £9,000. We knew that um, everybody, or seemingly everybody, had actually been canvassed by telephone. We knew, therefore, that that must cost a great deal of money in personnel, unless they got volunteers, and uh, in actual telephone costs. Now, when the election uh, expenses came in, apparently they put a fairly nominal amount for that. So it was quite clear that, at the very least, uh, there had been a lot going on which uh, no one actually was declaring. But it was the Liberal Democrat candidate who kicked up a fuss and subsequent inquiries by the local fraud squad were actually aided by Labour dissidents. The former Labour Council leader knew the Liberal Democrats were on the lookout for excessive spending and warned Labour's agent beforehand. I warned him a couple of times that this was highly likely to happen. Um, but he assured me that everything was fine, he knew what he was doing and he said at that time, I'm going to spend, spend, spend it. Um, and he did. What do you take him to mean by that? I don't know. He was, he was happy. He was in a good mood when he said it. He was feeling ever so confident. Uh, we were all feeling confident. Um, and they were determined to win the election, as we all were. It was our main aim to win the election. Excuse me. Uh, is it possible to look at the um, expense returns from the general election for the... Newark constituency, please. If you want to find out how much your MP spent on the election, or claims to have spent, 
Legally, you've got another two months in which you can go along to the local council, who are obliged to keep the returns for two years after polling. In Newark, the Fiona Jones court case essentially revolved round just a couple of crucial sums. Committee rooms are down at £500, making a total of 8500 compared with the limit of 8900 roughly. But it's that committee room's figure that's the intriguing one, £500. For within that is £350 for the Newark headquarters, including telephones and computer equipment. And this was the site of that Newark headquarters, rented three months before polling day, and now occupied by Jester's, a novelty shop. But how much should these premises have counted as one of Fiona Jones's electoral expenses? The Fiona Jones case opened a whole can of worms about an election law that's not only vague, but ancient, drafted in an era when the latest technological wizardry was the telegram more than a hundred years ago. It raises obvious questions too about what should count as an election expense and what shouldn't. And when indeed does the meter start ticking? Is it simply on the day that the Prime Minister calls a general election? Or should one include in an era when election campaigns can last months, if not years, money that's spent well in advance. For instance, on an office like this one. The defence claim most of the £750 rent on the premises over three months should be attributed to the local council elections and general party activity, rather than the parliamentary campaign. Nonsense, said prosecution witnesses. Was Paxton's court a, constitu a general constituency office, as the defence say, or was it for the general election campaign? It was for the general election, there's no doubt about it. Any meeting that I went to of the constituency, there'd never been a hint of having an office for the constituency. We'd never had one. We've always managed perfectly well without. But the biggest undeclared expense was a computer operation costing around £3,000 in which a software programme was used to add people's phone numbers to a disc of the Newark polling register. Then three telephonists were paid £1,200 to phone every elector to ask how they'd vote. But Labour denied it was a campaign activity or canvassing, merely building a database, they said, to identify Labour voters. There was a, a significant amount of telephone canvassing that was taking place. People were being called more than once on some occasions and also during the election day itself and people uh, were objecting to that level of telephone canvassing that was taking place. Labour might have seen a case like this coming. Two years ago, Newsnight accused the party of spending more than £100,000 on the Wirral by-election, more than three times the legal limit, and that was probably an underestimate. But Tony Blair, despite commitments to clean up politics, didn't seem too concerned. Sorry, am I going now? Mr. Blair, you do seem to be spending an awful amount of money on this by David. Oh, please, Mike. Sorry, what's Sorry. Uh, Are you sure you're not exceeding the expenses in it? Now, Labour faces another tricky by election in Newark. Funnily enough, they'll be able to spend a lot more this time round, since spending limits in by elections are about four times those at general elections. But it's hard to believe any party would dare go over the limit. And having spent hundreds of thousands defending Mrs Jones and her agent in court, Labour probably couldn't afford to break the law again anyway. That report by Michael Crick. Well, I'm joined now by Conservative MP Liam Fox, who's in our Bristol studio, by Professor David Butler, expert in electoral law, who's joining us from Oxford, and Fraser Kemp MP, former election organiser for Labour from Birmingham. Fraser Kemp, in retrospect, do you think it was a mistake to have campaigned that you were going to be whiter than white? I mean, in effect, you've been caught in the same kind of trap that the Tories were over back to basics. I think we need to get this case in perspective. As Michael Crick's film pointed out, it revolved around 
two very small instances and I think what it has raised is some of the anomalies and the problems that we have with British election law that was devised over a century ago. There is huge uh, dispute over what should be included and what shouldn't be included in it and uh, certainly the Labour Party has always been at the forefront of trying to ensure that we get some independent assessment on this. We were the ones who well, got it raised at the Neil Committee and we are the ones who want electoral commission to give advice to candidates and parties to make sure you know, what is declarable and what isn't. Well, it may not be very serious to you, but I mean, this is what the judge said to Fiona Jones, you have brought shame on yourselves and a sense of betrayal on the people involved in the election campaign. This, this is serious stuff. Well, I said it revolved around two instances where there was discrepancies on the prosecution and the defence on what should be declared and what shouldn't. That isn't to say, clearly, we accept the verdict which has been announced today. We're disappointed with it, but we accept it. What I am saying is that election laws, stands in Britain today, needs to be changed. And this isn't something we're simply saying tonight because of this court okay, case. We're going to be moving on to that in a minute, but I just want to ask Liam Fox, I mean, Fraser Kemp was there saying this is a couple of individual cases. You can't really pretend this is a basis for, for widespread sleaze in the Labour Party, and we're not talking about cash being stuffed in envelopes. Well, you've got obviously someone that the judge and the jury have found guilty and said that they've spent far more than was allowed by law. There's another Labour MP, of course, up facing charges in, in Glasgow. And, and since the election from a government that campaigned on being whiter than white, as you said, not only have there been widespread accusations, again, that you mentioned in your programme about overspending, but we've had Bernie Eccleston, we've had Robinson, Mandelson, uh, we've got one Labour MP convicted, another one in court. It's hardly a, a sleaze-free government, and it shows the level of hypocrisy that exists within the current administration. But can you put your hand on your heart and say honestly, that no Tory MP has been guilty of the same kind of things as Fiona Jones has been caught for? I think you have to draw a major distinction here between the difficulty which uh, Fraser correctly pointed out about election expenses and people who make genuine mistakes and something that's clearly done and which the court believes was done uh, purposely, dishonestly. And I think that is where Fiona Jones has come unstuck because obviously they've put figures in which were utterly unrealistic and were meant to be covering up the truth. I'm sorry, I'm a bit confused here. What I was asking you is, can you put your hand on your heart and say that no Tory MP has been doing the kind of things that Fiona Jones did? She was just unlucky. She was caught out. I don't think she was unlucky. I think this is uh, a great ploy, a great spin but on this. Has this no was Tory something MP that was, done the same Well, this thing. was something that was clearly a crime, that was investigated by the fraud squad, as they would do uh, with any election returns that were, were questioned. And uh, people, are, as, as your programme pointed out, are perfectly free to go and look at them anywhere. We mustn't try uh, and wash over this. This was a crime. Professor Butler, um, Liam Fox there saying that it's uh, just, uh, just a crime within the Labour Party. Is this kind of thing, does it happen in other political parties too, would you say, in your experience? Oh, election expenses, all of it, all involve creative accounting. Uh, I mean, quite a lot of people stay way, way within the election expenses, and not many in the past used to spend much more. I think the temptations are great now to spend more. But nearly 50 years ago, I once overheard a Conservative and Labour agent agreeing not to look too closely at each other's expenses. It's wonderfully easy and to produce rather bogus accounts. You attribute things that weren't really part of the election expenses to, or were part of the election expenses, to earlier outcome, outlays by the party and so on. You hire your computer or your office at a low rate. You buy your paper in advance and then print the election on addresses on used stock. There are a large number of gimmicks that have been done by all parties, and the parties know that they've all, all both sides, all sides have fraud, been fraudulent when they actually did in by-elections change the law a few years back to allow them to spend four times as much in by-elections. Okay. And as Michael Crick pointed out, that didn't begin to cover the cost of the world by-election on either side. Fraser Kemp, I mean, you've been a regional organiser, I mean, coincidentally in the, in the same region that Fiona Jones comes from, you must have come across the kind of practices that David Butler was describing there. Well, I, I haven't. And I mean, as far as I'm aware, that people who fight elections, the returns that have been submitted are, have been correct and in order. And clearly, if people dispute that, then they should have raised it at the time. But there are problems about the system which exists, and it often is one of confusion. What is a declarable local expense, and what is part of the national campaign? In Britain, we do not have national campaign expenditure limits. Now, there are a lot of things which happen in a national campaign that can have an impact locally, which is arguably should be a declared expense and I think that's why it's right that the Neil Committee 
after pressure from the Labour Party, have asked this to be opened up, and we want to see an electoral commission, and we want to see some of these questions answered. Okay, but if, if Fiona Jones is a, a case apart, a rotten apple in, in a barrel, why is there the need for this wholesale reform of electoral law? Because electoral law it was written well over a hundred years ago, a, a lot a lot of the case law actually derives from uh, various uh, elections in in Ireland at the time in, in the last century, and I just think there is a need. Uh, Michael Crick again in the film rightly pointed out. I think on election expense return forms there is a section for telegrams. Well, you know, yes, not telegrams many people and not phone canvassing, which was uh, one of the things that uh, well, happened in Newark. And not many people send telegrams in election campaigns. You know, cars okay. didn't exist, well, uh, television Butler. didn't exist. Okay, Professor Butler, what kind of reforms would you like to see to, to rule out these kind of bogus practices? Well, it's an enormously difficult thing to decide what is the length of an election and what actually should be charged. The whole of British election law is in a mess for one other reason that nobody's mentioned this evening, and that is the Bowman case, when a year ago the court in Strasbourg ruled that you couldn't keep to the old rule, which was only the election agent could spend money. Anybody now can spend money up to some as yet undefined limit and election expenses are going to go through the roof. I think the idea would, that... Would an independent election commis commission, would that help? Oh, I'm sure it would, because it would actually give much more research to it and try and find answers. But there are no simple and complete answers. And some places, like Australia, which has quite civilised elections, has actually given up the attempt to put a ceiling on election expenditure. We've just got to accept that this is a very difficult area, but it can be dealt with a, much, a lot better if we actually have an independent electoral commission, not a junior bit of the Home Office, de looking generally at all aspects of elections and particularly at the new developments. I mean, the absence of anything in the law dealing with computers or telephone banks or direct mail. So, no, There's a lot of central stuff It needs to be brought out. up to date. So, Liam Fox, is this something, that an independent commission, is this something the Conservative Party would back? Well, yes, there are aspects of this that we find very attractive. But of course, it's trying to persuade the government to do it and to do it on time and in a meaningful way. Today in the House of Commons, we had a debate on a referendums commission which would have dealt with funding aspects and questions during a referendum, and the government refused to back yes, that. So I think that's indicative of the culture yet. of the government, which is very worrying because without the government taking the problem seriously, and in your film, you saw the Newsnight reporter being brushed aside by the Prime Minister who simply didn't want to listen to allegations that they were overspending. And without the government's genuine commitment, we cannot make progress. And uh, Fraser Kemp, finally, uh, Fiona Jones has said that she is going to appeal. Will the party back her in this? Well, I think the party's going to consider that. What we are acutely aware of, as from lunchtime today, Newark doesn't have a member of parliament. And uh, clearly, that is a, a situation which has to be resolved quickly. By election, you're going to win? We're going to fight it. We're going to fight it hard. We've got a great record over the last two years. Low inf inflation, low... Right, right, uh, OK. So <laughs> the, 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 the electioneering <laughs> begins already. Fraser Kemp, Liam Fox and Professor Butler, thank you all.